To make a new table, like if you want to make a new table that's a copy of the original, so you have a backup, or maybe you just want to make a new table based upon a few of the fields here, or maybe a combination of some fields in this table and other related tables, you can use the Make Table Query, and to do that just come up, click on the Create tab, go to the Queries group, and create a query like you normally do. Add the tables to the query, go ahead and add the fields from the tables into the grid below, set the criteria, view the query, and once you're satisfied with the results that you see, then go ahead and convert it into a make table action query. Run the action query, and when you do that, it'll create a new table based upon the records that you saw in that query. Or if you already have a query that pretty much has what you want when it comes to making a new table, like my price increase update query, now it's an action query, so we don't want to double click on it because if we do, it says, hey, we're going to do this. We're like, no, we don't want to do that. So we can go ahead and right click go to the design view and it's got everything I need and if it doesn't I just need to make a few changes like instead of pulling in records whose part numbers begin with 10 and 14 maybe it's going to be 9 and 27 in any case it's got pretty much everything I need here all you have to do is come up here on the design tab to the query type group and select make table and then it says okay give us the name of the new table where you want to go ahead and dump all these records into now is it actually pulling I better check let's click cancel come up here, click on the view button just to view the results and not to actually run the action to perform an update so it increases the book price by 5%. We don't want to do that. Let's just view it and see if it, oh, there we go. We got something being pulled, a total of 17 records. Okay, let's go back to the design view. That works. Let's come up here, make a table, and we'll call it our, our price ink backup table. Go ahead and click okie dokie. Clears it up here from the previous of the update query and at this point you may want to save it but if you do you'll overwrite the original to avoid that and to save it as another query then come up here go backstage click on file go down to save as click on save as object click on save as and go ahead and call it my Q for query and then MAK for make table or you know MAKT whatever works for you and then the name of it uh, my new projects table, click okie dokie, and there we go. We've got the original down below, didn't overwrite that, and then right there, the exclamation point for action, what is it doing as an action? It's got a table with an asterisk, well, kind of looks like an asterisk, but where it makes a new table. Nice. And you can see the title here of the query is Q mocked my new projects. So, now that we have that ready to go, and we got it saved as a separate query, not overwriting the original, we can go ahead and create our new table by coming up here and clicking on the run button. And it says you're about to paste 17 rows into a new table. Are you sure? Of course. Hey, there it is. Double click and... Okay, that's a problem. I didn't want to see or have just the book price. I wanted all the fields in that table. Well, that's good to know. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And you can see that it's just pulling in that. So what we can do is we can get rid of this field, hover over the top thin gray bar, till I can see a black arrow pointing down. Click on it to select the entire column, delete it. And I want to keep this because it's got the criteria where I just want the records whose part numbers begin with 10 and 14, but I want the other fields. So remember, if you double click and add the asterisk, it adds all the other fields. Now, what's interesting is that this isn't checked, and that's good because, let me check it and go ahead and click on the view button. Let me, there we go, the view. It's gonna have the part number field listed twice. There it is once, there it is twice. I don't want that listed twice in my new table. When we go back to the design view, it's good for the criteria to be set but not be shown. So it'll go ahead and perform its function and say, okay, let's pull the records whose parts begin with 10 and 14, but let's not see that. And then over here, we'll just have the part number listed once because it lists all the fields from the book project table, including the part number. So when I come back and I click on the view button, just got the part number listed once, and it's still performing its criteria from the other one that's not being viewed, where it pulls in only those records whose part numbers begin with 10 and 14. Great, let's go back to the design view, and let's run this. Now remember, we already ran it, and it's just pulling in this. So let's close out. So what's gonna happen if I go ahead and click on, let me go back to the design view, it flipped out on me, went to the other tab here. When I click on run, it says, oh, well since this is set, to go to the price ink backup table, it's going to delete it and replace it. Are you sure? Yes. 
Here we go. Are you sure? 17. Yes. Did it work? Double click. Hey, there we go. That's nice. So not only do I have my part number, but I actually have the title so I know what the name of that part number is and everything else that goes with it that's important to me in this Price Inc. backup table. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.